This is Dean with Westlake Pro, and today we're taking a look at Ozone 7 Elements, the new plugin from Isotope. So we are going to be taking a look at the options in this video. If you want to learn more about the plugin, be sure to check out the overview and demos that we've done. Those links are in the description. So when we pull open the options here, you can see that we've got three tabs, General, I.O., and Social. Let's start with the General tab. We can actually choose if we want to enable the meters or disable them. We can choose whether or not we want to see the tooltips, which when we turn it on and we hover over different things in the plugin, it actually pops up with a little description of what that does. Very helpful for getting to learn the plugin. We can also dim the controls when bypassed. So when we turn that on and we bypass the plugin, uh, you can see that the controls are dimmed. Here we have the frame rate limiter which allows us to set the frame rate. If you have, uh, if you're running into CPU problems, you can actually set this to uh, a lower amount to save a little bit on graphics. This is one of my favorite features of Ozone 7 Elements uh, in terms of cool options, is you can actually change the opacity of the plugin. This is really cool if you're working with a small screen and you wanna be able to see behind, you wanna see what part of the song you're working in uh, you're looking at your two-track editor, you're looking at Pro Tools, and you want to see what's behind it, you can actually just do that. You can still see very clearly that you have access to these controls, but you can also see behind it and see what you're working with. Over here we've got authorization and updates. This is where you authorize your copy, uh, and also check for updates. This is where the presets are stored here in the preset folder. And enabling analytics helps Isotope improve the plugin. You can also choose the history depth. This is how many times you can undo something within the plugin. You can also choose the amount of keyboard support. If you're running into conflicts with your host or your DAW, uh, you know, go ahead and turn this off, but otherwise minimal is a good setting. Here you can actually take a look at your host sync viewer. You can see things like what the tempo is set at, you can see the types of things that are syncing with your host. You can also view your buffers. And when you go ahead and start this, and you hit play, you can actually see what the buffer is set on your host. If you're running at a low buffer and you don't have the fastest machine, you might want to bump that up. Finally, we have delay compensation. Enabling delay compensation, uh, you can also disable it if you are running into problems with your host. Here we have the I.O. setup. So we can enable or disable the meters. If you want to save on graphics and save on CPU, you can disable those meters. You can also show the peak hold. So when I play this, you can see that those hold there. And you can set the amount of time that those hold down here. You can also choose whether or not you want to detect the true peaks. Here we have our source, whether you want stereo or midside, which you can also just choose by clicking here on the interface. Here, the social tab, you are able to connect with Isotope and check out all of their social channels to follow them for more news, version updates, things like that. So that is the options within Ozone 7 Elements. Be sure to check out our other videos to hear what this sounds like and to you know learn a little bit more about each of these controls that you have. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe to the Westlake Pro YouTube channel for more videos like this.